Hello, boys and girls. It's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And I had to say girls that time. I've usually said, hey, guys. But we've had more females joining and, and subscribing. And so welcome, ladies. Welcome. It was a, a bit of a sausage party there for a while. So I'm glad to have you on board. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope you find this informative. All right. So today we are going to work with basic designing and using a few few tools and uh, gives you some practice and doing some things you might not be comfortable with, but this is something you can just play with in your spare time and create some really unique ideas and shapes. All right, so <clears throat> in fact, uh, I opened my art library. Here is my square coasters that I've started designing, and there's a few uh, crazy shapes. I like this next one even better. Come on, there. I like the abstract. I really like that a lot. And then lastly, that one. And then uh, that was square coasters. All right. If I come over here to my just my geometrics. This was in reminiscent of the spirograph. If any of you grew up playing with a spirograph, that's what we're doing. We're creating some uh, replicating some spirograph images that are engravable. And we're going to do some really neat tricks and uh, show you some shortcuts on how you can customize these and a way that you can generate four coasters within a set and each one of them different off of one design. It's pretty neat. All right. So uh, this and, and, and what I like about this is, is when I say they're unique, I've not rehearsed this. I've not planned it. So. Let's get in here and do some basic designing. All right. Uh, if I start out on my double alt, my black layer, I come to a, the square selector tool or the square tool, holding my shift button and draw a square. That brings us and gives us a uh, uniform square, a true square, not a rectangle. And now let's go ahead and just make it uh, nine inches by nine inches you know uh, i lock that that would have been easier all right and for the ocd folks i'll put it in the center of the table now when you're working with a shape you can edit its properties now if you select it and right click you can say show me the properties or you can come up here to window and say shape properties now this I think is a uh, I think that first one might have been a little screwy name but shape properties and show properties are the same thing and I didn't use it as much as I used to but now I've used it so much that I have it checked right here and because I have it checked it's right here in my menus all the time so for me all I do is select it and then say show me my shape properties right there and there I've got them but if you don't have this open go to windows check that shape properties and it'll bring it over here for you in your menus if you don't like having those open and you don't use or work with those menu open if you just select it right click show properties it would then generate this same menu for you over here now this gives you the properties of that shape that you have selected if you had it on a cup priority it would show you what it is the power scale that's for another video but there's your height and width and then your corner radius. And the power scale is really neat. What it does, it's really neat. But we're not talking about that today. We're going to keep this simple. Height and width is already there. We know it. We put it in. That's 9 by 9. That's 9 by 9. That's correct. Corner radius. Now, we talked about that in the previous video. But if you haven't worked with it, you have a radius over here that will allow you to select it and then put a radius on anything that has your angles on it like this and you actually enter your dimensions of how much of a radius you want well since we're working with a nine by nine square and then we know that because it's there and we put it in this corner radius if we uh select it that's actually well i think it's uh one uh one ninth of that uh, since we're working in inches, if I'd have done 10, in fact, let's do this. Let's make the math easier. Uh, 10 by 10. All right, we're doing 10 by 10. If I do a corner radius, that right there is 
should be a one by one inch radius and 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 that would allow since it's 10 inches half of that's five i should be able to take this number up to five and it actually start turning into a circle there we go because once you go five by five five inches this way and five inches that way to create that radius well you've done the same thing all the way around and no it's no now it's no longer a square it's a circle so if you weren't aware how that works that's how it works uh so we're back to zero we have a four right angles four 90 degree angles but did you notice there's a down arrow right there you go up to increase your radiuses zero but let's go down ain't that cool same thing five by five now you can use this if you need to create uh frames uh or want to accentuate frames in a certain way or create a particular frame in fact uh totally uh getting squirrel uh off subject if we take that shape right there and say select outline and give it a quarter inch outline 0.5 there's your nice little frame real quick but that's not what we're doing tonight so let's get rid of that so that right there is your maximum corner radius inner radius and you've seen that basic design and and uh might have used it from clip art seen it also once we start doing things we're going to do i said oh i recognize that well now you see the root all right now since i've started working with light burn i have started using more geometry than i have ever used in my life so miss mcginnis from north gaston high school if you are watching this uh, i hated your class but i did remember some basics and that is from here if we were to draw a straight line from here over to a straight line to this axis and connect the four dots up and down if you know what i'm saying that would have made a square so that's you know if we come here to here you know to the center of that image out here that creates a 90 degree angle so if we came directly outboard right out about here would be 45 degrees half that's 22 and a half and over here's another 22 and a half so i'm looking at where the points of another image would be so this is the original a copy would be here that's one copy a copy would be in the middle that's two copies copy be here's three copies and since this is the original i don't know that we need a fourth one because i said we're doing this on the fly so right now i counted three copies so if we select it hold our control button and hit D for duplicate one two three times don't touch anything else you have to come to your rotate and tell it to rotate 22 and a half degrees and hit enter okay don't touch anything else just type in 22 and a half degrees hit enter oh my i did undo that i forgot you have to select the the duplicate all of our duplicates are layered on here so just select the, what was the original image, but that's just one of the other remaining duplicates. Well, now since we did uh, 22 and a five, 22 five, now we need to do rotate 45. So 45, enter. And then 45 and 22 and a half is what? 47, 90, no, 67 and a half. So we've selected that one again until it 67, oh, 67 and a half, hit enter. All right. It don't look like much right that's okay come down here zoom out select them all and then come up here that you've selected them all and tell them all to go to the center of the page and then tell them all to bullseye now nah, should have bullseye them first so bullseye center of the page now that looks like something you would have maybe made with your spirograph, right? Okay. Now that <clears throat> that by itself is kind of neat, but we're not done. First, we want to do is go to our, we've got our selector tool, select. My mouse is horrible. Select them all, 
group it. Now we use this in a previous video too, or no, we haven't talked about this one. This is the, we've looked at this one, the tic-tac-toe board, that's the array, and that'll set them up in array in, in grids, rows and columns. Well, this one is below it is also an array tool, but is the circular array tool. If you select it, now I personally like to select all of these. Use the last selected shape object as center, rotate uh, object the object top copies because we, we don't if you don't rotate them then you don't know you've got a copy. And then I've I've played with this down here and honestly I haven't figured out what it does yet, but I will. And when I do, I'll let you know. All right, so uh, I had 16 up there to begin with. Let's put in zero. There's zero copies. That's our original. But as you increase your copies, now it's going to really start looking like a spirograph. Why is it going in eights? One, two copies. Can't see nothing. Three copies. There we go. Four copies. Back to original. Five. Okay. There's a spirograph. Uh, so, like I said, I'm, I'm. This is totally off the cuff. But see how those things now uh, just grow and grow and grow. Now you don't want to get too crazy because then you've got all these tiny little things that your laser's got to do. So I usually look for like that right there is pretty cool. So I'm okay. Now. This is not as unique as some of the others I've done. In fact, I'm not really crazy about it, but I'm going to show you how you can make this one even crazier. Select them all again and group them all. Come over here, your square. We want to go on a tool line, and we just want to draw a square. And what what are some of those slate coasters? Are usually around four inches square. I, I don't. I haven't done one yet four we had it locked so it's automatically four if we tell that to go to center on our selector tool what does that look like that's just bare in fact let's zoom in so we can see that's just that doesn't hardly encompass any of it which ain't bad that just gives uh, a little little ex, uh, accentuation on the corners and then if you want to put a little uh monogram in there you could in fact let's just show you what that'll look like you just, uh, we've selected uh, actually you want to select the whole outer image first hold your shift button and then select our square we just did come up here to tools and hit cut shapes I just cut and now I'm going to hit the delete button and that's what that would generate that almost like four spider webs in the corners and that wasn't what I was expecting but that's cool too like I said it's don't be afraid of this thing. Get in and just start playing with it. But that wasn't what I was wanting to show you. So let's go out of that. Let's go undo, 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 go back. Now, we should be back to where we, yep. All right, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And since that doesn't get us much more than just our corners, if I'm and I'm on just my tool path, holding my, my control button and dragging from the corner, that will cause my tool path to enlarge from the center. So holding control and pulling out, you know, you can see my tool path increase. And I'm going to take it right out to about the edge of those where those points meet. So they're cut off. Those points come to a point in the corner. All right. So now I'm going to keep that. Now, uh, now I want to, uh, in fact, this is re what's really cool. If you can never remember about which one you should select first, the tool path or the object, if you use your Boolean assistant, it doesn't matter. In fact, let's do this. Go out. And before we do anything, we're going to select everything here. And we're going to group it first. And now we're going to duplicate it uh, three times. So control, one, two, three. And then without touching anything but our arrow keys, move that off. Come back over here, select again, arrow keys, move it off one more time. There we go. All right, now we want to 
ungroup it one time because all these others are grouped. We don't want to ungroup everything. So with that, the whole thing selected, ungroup once, and that will, will free up our tool path, but keep the rest of it grouped. All right, so it doesn't matter which one you select first. Select the tool path first, then select your object, then come to your tools, Boolean assistant, and that will give you four options here. And depending on the, your computer, and what you have selected and how your settings are. Sometimes this is quite fast and sometimes it's slow to respond. But right now, if I hit reset, that's our original image. But what I like about the assistant, it's my best friend, I've said it a hundred times, you hover over this and it will show you what it will produce if you select it. So that could be a potential uh, image. In fact, since I've got three other copies, I'm gonna keep that. We're gonna go ahead and say select it and okay now that's done i'm going to move that over here out of the way select one of our other ones bring it in fact i don't even have to grab it just tell it come to the middle page done now with all uh actually you need to unselect now select last time i selected the tool path first and then the outer image this time i'm going to select the outer image to show you hit the shift and click your tool path go to tools I didn't get that toolpath. That's the aggravating thing about when you're trying to get in that middle piece. Zoom in here. All right, so outer outer piece first, holding shift. Oh, you know what? I didn't ungroup it. Remember, you had to group it and duplicate it all and to move it all around. All right, so ungroup it once. All right, now outer group one time, shift and hold, and then there we go. Now we see them moving. Tools. Boolean assistant. Now, a minute ago, we did union A or B. So now we'll come to intersection A and B. Gives you something different. Select it. Okay. Go out. Let's grab it, move it out of the way. Grab one more, bring it to the middle. This time, <laughs> why I selected it, ungroup once. And we're going to select, I like getting that inner piece first, because that way you know you got it. Then all you got to do is come outside there and hit your shift and hit that. And when you see that select tool expand, you know you got them all. Tools, Boolean Assistant. Now we've done the first one and the second one. Let's get the third one. Okay. And now the last, bring it in here, ungroup one time. Select your cut tool, select your shape, Boolean assistant, and now we want our fourth one. That's not much different than, hmm, okay. There's some variance there, but not much. Uh, all right, and so four, okay. Now, let's bring these down to where we can get them all on the page at one time. Uh, in fact, we'll just come up here and we'll just tell it uh, four and a half. And move it to a corner. Bring this in here, tell it four and a half as well. Now, a couple of these look very similar, but we're going to see if, in fact, they are. They may be. They may not be. And four and a half. Bring it in here. All right. Now go to our page view. All right. So there are some similarities, but they're also dissimilar. You see, these corners are enclosed. These are not. There was something I seen change. Oh, same thing here. These inner corners are enclosed. These are not. But now here's where it gets cool. Go to your cuts layers. Change it from a line mode to a fill mode. Now, you've got two and four actually four entirely different shapes 
while they look very similar, <laughs> they're not. And what's cool, now you can use these and uh, come in here with a, a shape. In fact, let's, we don't want a six-sided shape. Let's go to our shape properties and let's give it more sides. Uh, no, we don't. We don't. We won't, don't want to look like a circle. No, we don't want it to be a hex. Uh, ten's good. All right. Now with that selected, hold your shift key, select that, and tell it to go to your center up. Now with them both highlighted, hit your tools, hit your Boolean assistant, Boolean, Boolean. And remember, you can scroll over these and it should show you. But see, now mine's not doing it because I've got too much going on. But it's okay. If you hit show or hit select it, and that's not what you want, reset. Select it. That's not what you want. Reset. Nope. Reset. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So. This is a negative image of that, but with corners on, it, it, it's fun. And you can just play with this. This was not something that I had pre-rehearsed because this was a little lackluster on what I would like to see. I don't know that I would have saved this. These I like, and these actually are kind of cool for a starburst uh, type effect. Uh, but when you put, and, and you, um, you're not limited. To, to where you put the shapes, how you put the shapes. Uh, in fact, uh, let's do another real quick one. Let's just say new. We're not going to save none of that. Let's work with some circles. Let's put a four inch circle in here. Hold our shift key and select. And let's make her four inches by four inches. It's locked. That's good. Now let's do uh, let's do three circles or two two duplicates. So select Control D to duplicate. Control D to duplicate. Now there are three circles right now. You can't see them, but they're there. The top one is on here, the last one you created. So we're going to drag it over here. And then we're going to select another one, drag it over here. So now we've got three circles, all the same. Now, if you select that circle, and I want to select the, I want to position the center of this circle if we were to bisect that circle right down the center of diameter and i want to put it at the end of the, of the or the out the outermost part of the diameter of this circle this is how you do it uh, i think come here in fact you see how we got the uh, cursor 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 and you can come out here and it gives you the arrows where you can draw it and rotate it but if you stay inside those squares and you come to a point on the radius. Now, see how I just changed to a bullseye? Click it. My mouse is horrible. Once you get there, click it and drag it over. All right, well, I don't want to go over there. Oh, you know what? Same thing. Come up here to this one. Now, and I want it to there. I want it to go point to point. I didn't have a point to take it to. So now those are centered up. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring this one to here. And what happens if I bring this one to here? No, nope, don't want to do that. That's the same thing. Or is it? No, no, that looks that's all right. We're going that was the same thing, but in different position. All right, put them all on our black layer. So select them all, and we're in our fill mode. So it's already starting to show you that. But I don't like working fill mode. So let's go back to line mode. Now we're going to use this. Uh, array the circular array thank you computer all right so we selected all those come down to circular array and since i've already the last one i did i had three copies so that's what it automatically brings in but as you start increasing your copies 
And what I'm looking at here is the center of this right here. That is where I'm looking to make my tile. So if I start down here as the original, start building, that's not too shabby. If you, know, you, if you cut right there in the middle, you've got some pretty neat arches. But the more you do it, the more spirograph it looks. And I, I like that. Now, oh, oh, I just seen something here. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, in fact, we're going to do that right there. Okay. Now, you need to zoom out so you can select them all. Put it in the center of the screen. Get it away from the order. All right. Now, uh, group them. Let's get us a cut tool. In fact, just for giggles, we're going to not there. We'll leave that there because we just reshift. Uh, with our select, let's select everything. Now hit Control D to duplicate it all. So we don't have to go if we want to use it again, we can. So that's out there. Now take our tool we just, or cut tool we just made and let's make it a start with a four by four. Unlock that four by four, and let's see where that comes in and zoom into that. And that ain't shabby because we started with a four inch circle, so that's going to take it right around the perimeter. All right, let's look at that. We did a four inch circle, now we got a four inch coaster. And if we, we've already got the cut tool selected, holding our shift, shift key, select the others, come to our tools, our Boolean assistant. We don't want that. That's kind of cool. That's nice. No, really want that. So out of these two, I would do that one. Okay. Zoom out, move this off the page, and zoom out where I can see. Select that till it comes middle. Let's get us another cut tool, four inches. Send it to the middle. Hold our shift key and select our design. Tools, Boolean assistant. And this one's got the four and a, okay, that's it. That's the other one. Select, okay. Now, if we do our fill. So now you've got a positive and negative image. That'd be kind of a odd looking burn with as much as that is. But this one is cool. <clears throat> In fact, that one I would probably say, bye bye. Select that one, bring it into the middle. Now, what I seen on this a minute ago that I thought was really cool and I wanted to keep it. <clears throat> I seen an image in here that we made just a minute ago. Come over here and let's go to the black layer and let's. Uh, create uh, what is that about a one inch square select tool let's make her one inch by one inch and now we're going to go to our shape properties give it as much negative as we can give it and then we're going to send it to the center we didn't go one inch by one inch what happened one by one. It's fat fingered. There we go. That looks better. And now we can make it bigger, holding our control button. All right. And now that's something else I want to tell you. As you make that bigger, now you can increase your radius. So now we can come down here and change our radius size and put it back in the center. There we go. But if you notice, you got these points are lining up with those. So there's our image again. But you can continue to increase that. 
and then continue to increase your radius. And now you can put in a monogram, a uh, text, uh, M, not little M, give it a big M and give it something funky. Uh, give it the Algerian, I think that's what it said. I wasn't looking. Yeah, Algerian. All right, and then put that in the center. And there you have a little monogram coaster. And something you designed that they're not going to go on Etsy and find, uh, you know, likely to find the same image because you just created it fresh and freehand. So there are some tricks on how you can engrave four coasters in the same amount of time that you can engrave two coasters or uh, one coaster even in some cases. That'll be in the next video. So if you haven't yet, subscribe. subscribe hit that button right there and uh and then ring that little bell for notifications so you'll see the upcoming videos and we'll be back in the shop as soon as we get those lenses but i'm having fun and designs and the thought i'd say what you know what this would be neat to share so i hope you learned something tonight or the day whenever you watched it it's night for me so this has been steve hobo for, hobo with wood thanks to the girls and guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video